Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is WireDogSec, back with another video for you guys. Today's video, we are once again in Try Hack Me. This is the Cybersecurity 101 learning path. This is the Exploitation Basics module. This is the Moniker Link CVE 2024-21413. Leak users' credentials using CVE 2024-21413 to bypass Outlook's protected view. Hopefully, you're all having an awesome day today and ready to learn something now, let's go ahead and dive into it. Task 1 Introduction On February 13, 2024, Microsoft announced a Microsoft Outlook RCE and Credential Leak Vulnerability. RCE is Remote Code Execution, by the way, with the assigned CVE of CVE 2024-21413 moniker link. Hafey Lee of Checkpoint Research is credited with discovering the vulnerability. The vulnerability bypasses Outlook's security mechanisms when handling a specific type of hyperlink known as a moniker link. An attacker can abuse this by sending an email that contains a malicious moniker link to a victim, resulting in Outlook sending the user's NTLM credentials to the attacker once the hyperlink is clicked. Details relating to the scoring of the vulnerability have been provided in the table below. You got the CVSS and you have a description over here in this table, okay? They got the published date, the Microsoft article, impact, severity, attack, complexity, and scoring. You can see all the information here. The vulnerability is known to affect the following office releases. Same thing here, release, and then version number over here. Uh, learning objectives, how the vulnerability works. Understand Alex's protected view using the vulnerability to leak credentials from an Outlook client and uh, detect, uh, de detection and mitigation measures. Starting the VM, which you've already have it started over here. It took a while for this VM to start up. I don't know what's going on there, but it managed to start up. All right, what severity rating has the CV been assigned? Well, if we scroll back up here, take a look at the severity, which is this item here, and we can see in the description, it says critical. So that's gonna be the answer for that one. Task number two, moniker link, and you have the CVE number here. Outlook can render emails as HTML. You may notice this being used by your favorite newsletters. Additionally, Outlook can parse hyperlinks such as HTTP and HTTPS. However, it can also open URLs uh, specifying applications known as moniker links. Normally, Outlook will prompt a security warning when external applications are triggered. And yes, this is what it looks like here. So you may have seen this somewhere before. Uh, this pop-up is a result of Alice Protected View. Protected View opens emails containing attachments, hyperlinks, and similar content in read-only mode, blocking things such as macros, especially from outside of an organization, by using the file colon forward slash forward slash moniker link in our hyperlink we can instruct Alec to attempt to access a file, such as a file on a network share using this ahref equals, and then the, I guess, the location of the file colon forward slash forward slash attacker IP, et cetera, et cetera. The SMB protocol is used, which involves using local credentials for authentication. However, Alec's protective view catch, yeah, catches and blocks this attempt. This vulnerability uh, here exists by modifying a hyperlink to include the exclamation point, um, special character, and some text in our moniker link, which results in bypassing Alex's protected view. Uh, for example, the ahref equals file colon forward slash forward slash attacker IP forward slash test, and you have the exclamation uh, point here, and it says exploit, and then you have click me, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Uh, we as attackers can provide a moniker link of this nature for the attack. Note, the share does not need to exist on the remote device as an authentication attempt will be attempted regardless, leading to the victim's Windows net NTLM v2 hash being sent to the attacker. Remote code execution, RCE, is possible because moniker links uses the component object model, which is COM, on Windows. However, explaining this is more is currently out of scope of this room as there's no publicly released proof of concept for achieving RC via this specific CVE. 
All right, what moniker link type do we use in the hyperlink? Well, as we read up above and saw here, it says by using the file colon forth slash forward slash moniker link in our hyperlink, we can instruct Outlook to attempt to access a file, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's gonna be answered for that one. Also, if you get stuck, you can click this hint here. All right, what is the special character used to bypass Outlook's protected view? So if we go back up here, where they're talking about that, it says the vulnerability exists or the one over here uh, exists by modifying our hyperlink to include the exclamation point special character and yada yada yada. So that's going to be the answer for that one. Task number three, we're going to talk about exploitation. And let's see what they are talking about here. For this attack, we will email our victim a moniker link similar to the one provided in the previous task. The objective as the attacker is to craft an email to the victim with a moniker link that bypasses Alex's protected view, where the victim's client will attempt to load a file from our attacking machine, resulting in the victim's net NTLM v2 hash being captured. But first, let's run through a POC I have created, which is also available on GitHub. So here's a link to that. And this is what the POC looks like, I assume. So yeah, yep. So go ahead and read through this here. I like how it's commented out on what to do here. So replace with your sender ID your sender email address, replace with the recipient email address, et cetera, et cetera. References the uh, CV. All right, some good stuff here. The POC takes an attacker and victim email. Normally you would need to use your own SMTP server. This has already been provided for you in this room. Requires the password to authenticate for this room. The password for attacker at monikerlink.thm is attacker. Contains the email content, HTML underscore content, which contains our moniker link as a HTML hyperlink. Then fill in the subject from and to fill it in the email. Finally, it sends the email to the mail server. Let's use Responder to create an SMB listener on our attacking machine. For the THM attack box, the interface will be dash capital I ENS5. The interface name will differ if you are using your own device, i.e. Kali. If you would like some homework, an impacted server can also be used. All right, so you can see here they're starting up Responder. Uh, let's open the vulnerable machine by pressing the um, CV 2024 yada 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 pane in the split screen view. Open Outlook by clicking the Outlook shortcut on the desktop. When Outlook has opened, click I don't want to sign in or create an account on the pop up. Okay, so let me go ahead and start up this attacker machine and then we will come back and continue. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Be sure to hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. Once you subscribe, be sure to hit that notification bell, all right? So you know every time I post a new video. As you can see here, most people that view my videos, view my channel, are not subscribed. Now, if you do subscribe, it will help me get into the YouTube algorithm so that we can continue to grow our glorious community here. As always, thank you all for taking the time to watch. Have a nice day and enjoy the video. All right, we're back. So let's go ahead and continue on here. As you can see, I started up Responder. Now there are some errors at the bottoms, but we're just going to ignore those for now and continue on. All right, it says let's open the vulnerable machine by pressing the CV machine here, which is this here. Let's open Outlook by clicking the Outlook shortcut on the desktop. When Outlook has opened, click I don't want to sign in or create an account on the pop-up. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up. Just dismiss the second pop-up by clicking on the X at the top right of the pop-up. You may need to drag the window to the left a little, depending on your screen resolution. All right. When completed, you will see the Outlook interface for this room. The victim's mailbox has already been set up in Outlook for you. All right, so this is the page here. We need to click this link down here. And then we need to click the X there okay now let's flip back over all right so here's the mailbox and let's go ahead and continue on just return to your attack box we will copy and paste the poc above onto the attack box so let's flip back over here and the poc is up there so let's go back up here and get ready to paste it All right, looks good. 
All right, for this, we will create a new file in the attack box, nano. So I'm going to open up a new tab here, nano, exploit.py, then paste this in here. Okay. All right, so that should be good. So that and use the slide out tray in the split screen view. Refer to the GIF below to the action. Right, yeah, I already did that. We will need to do some initial setup on our attack blocks for running the Python script. All right, so it says uh, modify the moniker link uh, line number 12 in our POC to reflect the IP address or attack block. So we need to get back in here. And we need to find that area inside of here. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so this email up here, there it is. I just went past it. Okay. So I need to put this attack box IP in here, which is going to be 10.10.234.98. Okay. So just place the mail server placeholder on line 31 with this here. So I'm going to get this ready to copy and paste. So we need to find the mail server. Okay, let's see. Okay, I guess this is it here. All right. Not sure if we need the quotes or not, but let's see. I don't think we do. All right. When done, we can run the exploit when prompted for the attacker's email password, enter attacker. All right, so let's go ahead and control X and save this. And let's go ahead and run this. All right, I guess you do need that in there. Well, let's go ahead and fix that real quick. All right, there it is, server. All right, now let's try this again. Okay. It says email delivered. All right. The Python script will print email delivered when the email has been sent. If the script complains about authentication failure, ensure you have correctly placed the values in exploit.py. Now let's return to the vulnerable machine and check for the new email. All right, should look something like this. And let's flip back over to the victim machine. And there it is. Okay. Click on the click me hyperlink and return to our responder terminal session on the attack box. And it should look like this here. Okay. It says success, the victim net antelum v2 hash has been captured on our attack box. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's put this back over to the attack box. Check our responder and let's see if it worked. Oh, there it is. There it is right there. Awesome. All right, question time. What is the name of the application that we use on the attack box to capture the user's hash? Well, we know that's going to be a responder because that's what we're using right here. OK, and there's the command up above responder dash I. Um, et cetera, et cetera. What type of hash is captured once the hyperlink in the email has been clicked? Well, we know that's going to be a net NTLM v2 because it mentions it several times in this um, area here, right? Especially down here. So that's it for that. Uh, task number four is detection. And let's see what they're talking about. Talking about Yara rules. Yara, a Yara rule has been created by Florian Roth to detect emails containing the file colon backslash backslash element in the moniker link. And this is what it looks like, apparently. Okay. They have the description in there. Yep, that's a definitely a YAR rule. I, ver I recommend taking a look at what YAR rules are and how to create those, how they work, etc. Because you may be doing those in your career at some point. And this looks like the area where it's going to be triggering on here. All right. It's looking for it in all kinds of different um, file extensions um, from what I can tell here. 
Okay, uh, Wireshark. Additionally, the SMB request from the victim to the client can be seen in a packet capture with a truncated net internal MV2 hash. And we can see that down here, up here. All right. Okay, uh, click me to proceed. All right, uh, task number five for mediation. Microsoft has included patches to resolve this vulnerability in February's Patch Tuesday release. You can see a list of KB articles by Office build here. Updating Office through Windows Update or the Microsoft Update catalog is strongly recommended. Additionally, in the meantime, it is a timely reminder to practice general safe cybersecurity practices. For example, reminding users to do not click random links, especially from unsolicited emails, preview links before clicking them for suspicious emails to the respective department responsible for cybersecurity. Since this vulnerability bypasses Outlook's protected view, there's no way to reconfigure Outlook to prevent this attack. Additionally, a, uh, additionally preventing the SMB protocol entirely may do more harm than good, especially as it is essential for accessing network shares. However, you may be able to block this at the firewall level depending on the organization. I highly recommend looking into that if this applies to your environment. Okay, so that completes this task here, and task number six, we're going to wrap up the video with the conclusion. Congrats, that was fun. As we know, Outlook is an extremely popular email client. The CVE is known to affect a large portion of the office suite, and given its extremely low attack complexity, it's quite a spicy one. Remember, it is essential to update Outlook through Windows Update or the Microsoft Update catalog as soon as possible, as there's no way to prevent Outlook's protected view from being bypassed. I hope you enjoyed this room. Mischief managed. All right, that wraps up this video. If you enjoyed the content, the information, you found it valuable, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button with the notification bell so you know um, how often I will upload videos, post everything onto my channel, etc., etc. Share the video, all that good stuff. Comment below with your thoughts and opinions on the information shared, etc., etc. As always, thank you all for taking time to watch my video. Have a nice day, and I will see you later.